Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. I start here right where I left off in the last episode, which is in sector 3, the second loop sector, uh, task 5. And I'm actually still pretty helpless um, facing this problem, because uh, if I take out this and compile the current code, uh, you can see that it's generating the output for pretty high uh, input-output pairs. So it's really difficult for me right now to to guess at what is actually going on behind the scenes, what is the target function I'm looking for. So um, I thought about this problem a bit and I guess I have to approach this another way. So what it take from the from the input output pairs is that with increasing input the output is also increasing that's what i can see and i see that it's not enough it's increasing more than just adding up the the numbers and it's increasing less than multiplying the numbers uh, up to the input that is. So just saying plus i in every step like I tried out last time is uh, producing um, numbers that are uh, too small. What is this here? Why is this all of a sudden giving me correct outputs? That's not possible. Ah, okay, if, of course, that, that yeah, stupid me. Uh, <laughs> This is of course not the output from this here. So uh, what I can what I can uh, tell you because you won't see it if I compile this is that plus e is going to produce numbers that are too small. You can see that here. And if I go to the next bigger mathematical operation, which is times uh, multiplication, uh, it's going to produce outputs that are too big. So oh yeah. It's not going to produce outputs at all because I started with zero and I multiply with e, so I would have to do something like that. Um, but then it produces outputs that are just too big. So it's got to be something in between uh, just summarizing the numbers and adding them up. And I thought it may be a possibility to just add every, let's say, second number, for example. Might be an option. Or so just say i plus equals 2. So then we, we multiply every second number. Let's see what happens now. So now it doesn't change at all. Why doesn't it change? Uh, of course, it's it's the same for six and seven. So maybe that's not it either, because I saw before that there, or I see here that there are different numbers. So maybe it's not uh, starting with uh, one or zero but starting from upper bound and saying, okay, as long as i is bigger than 0, I'm going to do i minus 10 and multiply this, because this way I will get a bigger number for a bigger result for 7 than I get for 6. But uh, now, now I have at least the, the right uh, a difference between these two numbers. But, of course, the, the difference is yet wrong. So, yes, um, I'm going backwards and I have the difference between uh, two numbers that are right next to each other. But what I can see from the current results is that the numbers are still growing too fast. Because for the 6 it's still too small and for the 7 it's already too big. So multiplication is apparently not the way to go. Um, maybe, maybe it's something else. Um, 
maybe it's actual edition but not only e but let's say two times e so let's see what happens here it's compiling it's compiling so this is too small two times e is apparently not enough it's too small for both so how about something like e times e this is not it because actually this is huh. yeah but I guess this is actually it because it's just exactly one too big and it's even telling me interesting look at line 4 it's it's telling me the what's the course of this problem is that I start with 1 here so if we start with 0 uh, I have both the 6 and the 7 right so let's see if that captures it completely or only uh, these two numbers so 6 is correct it's actually quite slow maybe it's my internet connection I don't know six it did not even generate another test case but apparently this is the right solution and it's even the most uh, skilled version so I got all the skill points nice let's continue okay what have we got here so I have a string as input which is six times a and I expect the output which is underscore six times and maybe a space I'm not entirely sure but it may be a space in between and my result is of course currently a because it's giving back the exact same string so what I could do here is get a string result do this empty string and say for int i equals zero i smaller than word dot length i plus plus um, add result underscore I'm not sure if there's a space so I'm going to try this with, un with underscore first and see uh, whether I have to add these uh, string does not contain a version of length but it contains this version of length right there's a method in string called length this is really confusing because it's not okay apparently there need to be spaces the question is, is if there is there a trailing space or not so let's try it with a space here and see whether it captures the result It's not doing anything right now. Hello? Oh no, it's doing something. But now actually there's a space too much. Now we can see it. So there's an error in yeah, there's an error in line eight. Thanks for this one. Okay, so is there an elegant way in Java to do a join of an array? With, a, with an intermediate uh, character with a separator, quick and easy way to turn every element with an array. This is your help. Google collections, no, that's not what I want to do. String utils, I don't have these available. Okay, 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 apparently I have to do this on my own. Okay, so let's say If i is bigger than zero, result plus equals space, and in all the other cases, just append the underscore. It should produce the right result. Probably not with a with a perfect skill value. Yes, it produces the right result. 
So let's see uh, what this tool tells us about further test cases, maybe, or about our skill rating. Okay, so apparently I captured the solution, but the skill, uh, the skill is actually quite low, which is was to be expected. So I keep trying, and um, okay, what can I do here? I would like to do a string join, but or an, uh, an array of, of characters, just the underscores, and then join it with a with a space. But I don't think there's an easy way to do that in Java. So, uh, actually, I'm going to have to do this somewhat differently, which could be the recursive way again, saying. Uh, return if word length is one I'm just going to return underscore and in the other case I'm going to return underscore space plus puzzle of word substring one I think that's the right way to put this in Java let's see if I got this right uh, no it does not compile oh because I mistyped length let's retry and see whether this all so this actually solved my function uh, my one test case I get generated here and I even got the full skill rating which is quite nice so let's go on to the last task at least I think this is the last task what value of M will solve this dual okay so I have input A output F input AA output FF have an input is a string saying M equals 0 I generate a character of strings that is actually has the same length as the string and I create a string from this character so Maybe there's just an offset, so A to B, A, B, C, D, E, F could be just an offset of 5. So I could just say M equals 5 and then say for um, int I equals 0 to um, I smaller S dot length i plus plus we're going to do set c i to s char at i uh, plus m is it going to do it i don't know i cannot add okay i need to add explicit cost C so I need to add the cost this to an int and the whole thing to char and this is really ugly but I'm curious to see what this game compiler does uh, implicit conversion cannot convert from int to char that's why I um, actually might be that char add what does char add return Java char add the char add method actually returns a character at least it's supposed to return a character char add is return a character and casting this to an int and then adding an int why doesn't this work this is probably either my stupidity or a problem in the conversion to 
uh, C sharp in the background. And I think my next episode is going to be about the C sharp Java conversion. But for now, let's let's try to solve this problem at hand. So actually, I want to have a look at the at the C sharp code real quick to see what's going on in the background. And interesting. This actually looks quite the same. <laughs> okay, this conversion didn't work at all. Switch to Java, but now it's going to kill my solution, right? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, thankfully, I copied this, so I can retry it. Um, so let's let's just define an int uh, new value which is end of s dot char at i plus m this value essentially and cast this new value back to character in the assignment maybe this way I can narrow down where the actual error is because I'm not quite sure right now interesting now I get Y and it expects D which is uh, Z, A, B, C, D still an offset of 5 so it wraps around instead of just uh, just restarting it so it wraps around saying that this whole thing is Da, 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 how to do this? How to do this? So I have an initial value a is not zero. That's the point. Oh, what happened now? I'm not sure. Anyways, um, since a is not zero, I want to have the. What just happened? It changed my. It changed my whole my code, didn't it? Did an inlining or something. So apparent oh no, now it switched to <laughs> interesting, now it actually switched to C sharp code. My previous solution is uh, went to C sharp right now, so this is completely messed up right now. Um I'm going to re enter that level. Oh it's not even the last one. So let's see. Ah, here's my here's my Java solution again. Interesting. Um, so let's just say char or int a is int of the character a. Then let's say int current value is. Uh, end of s dot char at i subtracted a then I have new value which is um, current value plus m and the whole thing modulo 26 26 and then we have the new value which is actually the new value plus our a offset converted to char. So we have three steps. This works for two test cases, but for these two test cases my solution worked before. The interesting thing is the upcoming test case which it's not generating right now. I'm pretty sure that this is not the most stylish solution for this, so I'm not going to get the full skill rating, but it would be nice to have at least a solution to know if my if my guesswork here was right. which it was, <laughs> and I even got the full skill rating for this solution. That's interesting, I 
wouldn't have expected that. Now I'm even more curious about the actual skill rating logic that's going on in the background. Anyways, I'm going to end this episode here and do the last episode of section 3 next time. So hope to see you there and uh, if you're interested in my casts, remember to subscribe to my channel. See you!